Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Claudia Monicelli, Christelle Martinet. And today I'll be channeling the Black Dahlia. And how I'm going to do this is first put up her picture. Let me get that here. There you go. And then I will start. So this is a woman from other times. Now, what we can say about her so you know, she was called the Black Dahlia. And her real name was Ellen uh, Elizabeth Short. She was born in 1924. She died in 1947. Why am I doing this today? Well, because she's come to me, the Black Dahlia. And lo and behold, the most difficult part is that she never passed. She has been earthbound all of these years. And I have sent her off and she is in the light. Uh, she was an American woman found murdered in the Limart Park neighborhood of Los Angeles on January 15th in 1947. And her case became very highly publicized due to this awful way they found her body it was a gruesome nature to this crime. It included the mutilation of the corpse and it was cut at the waist. She was cut in two. She was a native of Boston. Um, Elizabeth Short spent her early life in New, New England and Florida, and then she relocated to California. She was an aspiring actress, um, though she had no known acting uh, jobs uh, during her time. But she acquired the nickname, the Black Dahlia, Dahlia, after he, she died, because newspapers of the time often nicknamed particularly horrid crimes. And the term may have originated from a murder mystery, a, a film noir murder mystery that was released in 1946. Well, her unsolved murder and the details surrounding it have been a lasting intrigue, generating theories and public speculation and whatever. So I'm going to now tune in and see if we can find some light, shed some light on this major crime in the post-World War II in the United States, post-World War II America, that got national attention. Let's see. She's here, and she has very, very, very white skin. That name, the Black Dahlia, doesn't really suit her at all. She is full of light. And even though she was earthbound all these years, she has remained in the light. And of course, first thing is the thanks that her soul is giving for having been untrapped and freed to move on. Only I am able to tell you seriously what happened. It was a crime of passion and the man who killed me had found me he always knew that there was something wrong and he could not understand why I did not want to have a relationship with him. You see, during those years in the film industry in the United States, sexual preferences were very frowned upon and everyone hid their sexuality. I myself was a lesbian and had never fallen in love with a woman 
until I met my love. And it was the time that I had already had a relationship with my murderer and left him for my true love. I think that telling you her name has no importance for anyone now, but it is important for you to know that it was a crime of passion and I was murdered by my former companion. Just as you can imagine, he was raging from jealousy. He could not accept my choice. He was so disturbed by me that he literally went out of his mind. He also successively killed her as well at a later date. Nine months later, he committed that second crime, but it was not as gruesome as how he murdered me. He was sending a message, a message of sexuality by cutting my body in half. He was telling the world that I was only half a woman and it was the top half. Forgive me for these blatant statements concerning my sexuality. I am very pleased I can now speak about it. I did no one any harm. I wanted to love and be loved just as my female love did. Don't ever, ever spare yourself the truth, both to yourself and to others. This is a serious message for all of you. You are defined by your choices. It is who you are. I am very pleased to tell you that your health depends on the way you can accept yourself, any, anything about yourself, and how you look and how you love. I think you today have more freedom than I did in that time. But there are still countries that will kill for these sexual 
cases. Just be yourself and know that love is with you from the divine because loving is never a sin nor a crime regardless whether the situation is delicate and difficult. Delicate, I mean, if you fall in love with a person who is already married or spoken for. There is no way to control who we fall in love with. We can control our successive choices, of course, but you know yourselves that no matter how hard you try to stay away, love is so strong that it creates a new freedom for everyone. The power of your conviction is something that is at once an adventure and also a fearful occurrence that looms before your very eyes. If you change the way you look at it, it will be easy for you to take decisions. I am very sorry I died that way. This is why I remained earthbound because of the sheer tragedy and crime that was committed against me. It is true that we all make mistakes and we all love people that we do not control or better put that we cannot control. However, can you see that it is not something to be controlled? Wait just a moment. Think of what I have said so far and before drawing your conclusions, please think about what I said and then I will continue to speak to you by answering your questions that I can already hear. Whoa. Difficult. Very difficult. And and very very touching. Very touching. Very um strong. Very strong and and um almost um makes you want to look away. Okay, so uh, we're not going to do that. I'm not one to look away. And whatever her message is, I will be listening. And I hope that you um, will be listening too. If by any chance these this recording and these messages that are coming through offend you, please turn off the video. Um, there's no use for you to listen. But... It's always a learning experience when someone from 
the other side, I'll use that metaphor or allegory, comes and wants to speak because there's an important message we need to hear. Let's try to continue. Only you can decide for yourself who you want to love and if you want to love. There is love all around you in any object, animal, flower, inanimate objects as well contain love for you. It is a mistake to believe that you must be loved by a person and that you should suffer when your love is unrequited because the divine bestows love on everyone in equal measure. Be only afraid of not being able to love and also not being able to feel love around you. I would like you to try something that I think will help you. Be open now to this little experiment. Yes, it is an experiment because In a way, many of the things I will be saying, you may think that you have tried them. But be open and we will begin now. Sit calm and close your eyes and think of a scene, a picture, an image of when you were the most happiest. A day could be a time, a moment. Keep focusing on that picture in your mind's eye. Continue to breathe normally. Don't hold your breath ever. As you breathe slowly and comfortably, now look at that picture and put more people that you know inside that image. People who make you happy today, even if the image concerns a long ago time in the past. Again, breathe smoothly and do not hold your breath. Invite calm when you do this. And think of what the feeling you get is now. Keep breathing and imagine what color your aura is while you look at this picture. you will see a glow around the people and 
around the images. Focus on that color and that glow. Continue to breathe calmly. Lengthen your breathing as well. Now hold that image for a moment and I will give you time to think about it. I have my own image, of course, and um, I'll only share the color with you. There was an orange glow, similar, actually, to the letters on around my screen. That orange, um, like grapefruit, that grapefruit red orange. And she still wants to talk. She still wants to talk. I'm, I'm just going with what she says. Let's see where she'll take us. Now, continue breathing calmly and contact one individual in your picture in your mind's eye. Think of them intensely, whether they are alive or they have passed or they are far or near. Think intensely and in your silence, speak to them. Mention anything you want them to know and tell them anything you need to communicate to them. Do it now. Think of this. This is just an experiment, but you will see in time, it may take minutes, it may take a week, that person will send their message back to you. You will hear their message. If they are alive, most likely they will contact you. If they have passed, you will see them vividly in a dream or during a daydream. Remember to keep open to this. You will be very pleasantly surprised, but I must tell you, almost warn you, that when this happens, please do not be afraid because this is energy that you have communicated and sent. The messages coming to you will be the same energy in love. Have patience with yourself when you practice this kind of communication. Many people call it meditation. It is a popular word, but it is the only the sending of energy 
and the reading of energy. Be open and you will receive. Now I would like to try another experiment if you will try along with me. First, remove the image from your mind and breathe regularly. I will give you time and then we will do the next experiment. My neck, I, 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 I guess I'm so, you know, I'm breathing and, but I'm, you know, it's so intense. It's so, so, so intense. Um, let's keep going. Now, before I start, I will tell you what I will do. So, if you do not agree, you can just listen and watch. This time, I would like you to draw in your mind's eye, conjure up an image that was a very sad moment for you. It could have been a grieving moment. It could have been any kind of dissatisfaction or other. But in this exercise, I want to see if you can remove that pain and that suffering. This is the object of this exercise. Close your eyes and think of a moment, a scene, an occurrence that was so difficult for you to grasp that you remember it as not happening to you. You were almost removed from that moment. Own the image and know that it did indeed occur and breathe a long, slow breath inward, then outward. Again, inward and slowly outward and on the third breath, inward, and outward, on the exhalation, you are blowing away the image and the grievance. You have owned it and now it is gone. Breathe normally. Gather yourself and return to listening. I thank you, all of those who have done this brief experiment, because it is a learning process to tell you that you yourself have the power to accept and reject whatever you choose. This is also in relation to my life and my death. My message of you owning who you are and never being embarrassed or afraid to show your love to anyone. Remove those occurrences that ail you and heal 
by using your breath to remove the pain and it will be gone. You can also concentrate on those moments that bring you joy and that joy is a healing joy. This is the only message, the most important message I wanted to tell you. And once again, I am very grateful for having been ushered to my plane. I am grateful. Thank you. My God, just as she came in, she went out. This was one of the most intense, I have to admit, one of the most intense. Um, actually, she was talking about breathing and, um, well, breathing. I have uh, lessons that I teach breathing consciousness in movement and I don't feel like talking about it because I'm so still with that moment. Um, but do write to me. Those are two addresses. My emails, just write to me. The first lesson is free. They only cost then after that $30 for four lessons. It's done in Zoom. Uh, you can come in. I'll add you to one of my three lessons a week. So you can choose the time that you would prefer and um, you won't regret it. Um, I do hope this was of help to you, ladies and gentlemen. It was a pleasure, and I will be back. Namaste. Bye-bye.